Hey everyone, I'm cooking for you today. I'm gonna make one of my favorite things ever, some stock. Why do I love stock so much? Oh my God, let me count the ways. One, it's delicious. Two, I get to use up things that I would normally not be able to use anymore and that like excites me. Um, Three, I can use it to make so many other things taste better. Like I can use it to cook rice, I can use it in a soup, a stew, I can make a sauce with it. Um, and I even like drinking it by the glass. I mean by using up things I wouldn't normally use. I use like vegetable scraps to make my sauce. So if I'm using an onion in a recipe, I might cut off the ends or peel the skin off and discard them. But what I do is I put it in a freezer, in a bag in my freezer and save it for the next time I'm gonna make stock. So let me show you my stock pile. Okay, I, I have a lot going right now because we're in quarantine and I'm cooking at home all the time. So in this bag I see I have some pieces of carrot, some onion, I think I remember having some ginger and garlic in here. Ooh, it looks like scallions. A little bit of freezer burn, doesn't matter for stock. This bag, I have some leeks and I have a little purple onion and a ton of herb stems. Oh, this looks like celery. I sometimes like to shave the outer layer of my celery off because it's kind of stringy. And then these are, oh, so many. The stems of parsley and dill because I've been eating tons of parsley and dill lately and I think that this is going to be so fragrant and delicious in my stock. So you get to use all this food which you might otherwise discard and essentially you steep it like tea in water and come up with this beautiful new liquid that's like so much greater than the sum of its parts. So let's start collecting the veggies for our stock. I'll grab this celery skin all this herb and putting it in a big pot some red onion i want to grab this leek from the bottom of this bag as well Ooh, i have asparagus ends in there too sure we'll take a couple of those from this bag i'll grab some pieces of carrots uh, maybe some more pieces of onion Ooh, that that's a garlic clove let me get you and we're just dumping it all in. And then I also have this piece of ginger that's starting to go bad. I'll throw that in. I want a little bit more celery flavor and I have a bunch of celery right now that I'm honestly not gonna eat. Uh, so I'll just crack that in half and throw it in. A little more garlic in here. So I'm gonna throw the end of this bulb of garlic in the pot. And I also have some thyme leaves here that I'll throw in. If you couldn't tell, I love like a really herby stock. If you're making a vegetarian stock, you're pretty much done. You might also like to add some mushrooms to your veggie stock, which I do have. I took the stems of mushrooms out um, for a recipe that I made the other day and I kept them just like I kept the other veggies. These I decided first to roast in the oven to give them a more like deep roasty flavor and I even put some soy sauce on there for seasoning. So I'll add those in. And then for my stock today, I'm not making it vegetarian. So along with the mushroom stems, I also roasted some chicken backs. It's like the spine of a chicken. You can get them at the store for super cheap. You could also use like the carcass of a rotisserie chicken, bones from uh, chicken wings, Basically, again, the theme is using the parts that you wouldn't eat in a meal. So it's a great way to use up the leftovers. Speaking of, I have leftover pork shoulder bone that I'm going to throw in as well because I have it. Look at this, Mama. I roasted a whole pork shoulder one day and I saved the bone, so I'll put them in here. Um, bones and cartilage are great for stock because they let off oh what am i trying to say they make the stock more viscous like a better texture and impart so much flavor i think it's also very healthy to drink bone broth um in fact all the veggies we put in here have 
all their unique health benefits and then we're just like mixing it all together for our health okay and then i just did a little scan of my fridge and i found a few more things that i can add so first is this um partially cut into jalapeno that has seen better days i could still cook with it but i'd rather add a little heat to my stock so in it goes then i found this um whoa, slightly used um lemon also seen better days could still use it but i'm gonna use it for my stock and then lastly hold up lastly i found two little anchovy fillets I've never put anchovies in my stock before, but I love their like salty umami flavor. And I just think, yeah, let's give it a try. For more heat, but slightly different, I like to add a few peppercorns. I might also add crushed red pepper, but I'm kind of running low and I have the jalapeno in there. So I'm going to skip it for today. But if you want the heat, this is a great way to go. I hope you're getting the idea that stock is like, uh throw whatever in the pot kind of deal and it's not a recipe that you have to follow and it can be really reflective of what you like to eat like i had the dill and parsley in there i had this um jalapeno those are flavors that i like anyway so your stock will like reflect you and it's a beautiful thing this is what we have in our pot now we just got to add some water and I'm making a big pot of stock, as you can see. You can make whatever amount feels right for you. Clearly, I had a ton. And also, I'm a stock pro, so I will use this up. I'm just going to fill it up till it covers. You get the idea. Oh, and I almost forgot to show you this. So, because I roasted those chicken spines specifically for this stock, um, I made a little bit of a, a pre-stock in that pan. Let me show you. So this is the pan that I roasted the chicken backs and the mushrooms in. And then when it came out of the oven, I took them out of the pan and added a bunch of water. And now you can see the water is brown because it picked up all the bits from the bottom of the pan. Well, most of them. So that's got all that chicken and soy and mushroom flavor and i want it for my stock so let me add it to the pan off screen i need two hands so yeah if you have that available to you go for it if you're using um chicken carcass from a roast chicken and it's not no big deal so now you need to cook your stock if you're doing it on the stove you're going to want to put your pot with a heavy lid on it and bring the stock up to a simmer. So not like a, an aggressive boil like you would if you were cooking pasta, just like a little bubble. And you can leave the lid on heavy to help it come up to temperature. And then maybe you wanna like tilt it off just ever so slightly. So some of the water evaporates and it reduces the flavor down. That's optional. You feel it out, you're in your kitchen. If you're cooking it on the stovetop, I think you should let it simmer for at least two hours. But the longer you go, the more flavor you'll get. Since I'm in my kitchen, I'm actually going to use a pressure cooker that I have just because it makes really fast work of this. Here we go. We got the good old instant pot. We'll fit the lid on, turn it to seal, and then I'll do manual high pressure definitely more than five minutes. Let's do an hour. It's going to take longer than an hour in here because it'll take time to come up to pressure. And then I'll leave it there for a little while to release the pressure. But yeah, the longer the better with stock, for real. So now I'm just going to hang. The pressure cooker is going to do his thing for a couple hours. If you're cooking your stock on the stove top, I would suggest just checking on it a few times or you give it a stir. If you had cracked the lid and too much water has evaporated, add some more water. Let me know, do you have any stock related questions for me? Okay, we have arrived at the finished stock. Ooh, look at it. I wish you could smell it. So now we need to separate the solids from the liquid. We keep the liquid, we discard the solids. 
Ugh, and I'm like having a moment right now because normally I would compost all of See? And it was just so exciting to me that I could take like food waste, turn it into liquid gold, and then still recycle the rest of it. Um, but in this moment of quarantine, New York City has halted its composting program. I've been composting the city for six years. It's been <laughs> like, it's been this weird adjustment this last week to no longer compost. And I'm, I'm finding myself like having to mourn that uh, practice that I do. Uh, but if you have a backyard, you could compost your stock scraps. Super cool. Now we have most of the big chunks out of the stock and then I'm gonna pour it through a strainer into another pot to catch the little bits and pieces as you can see are starting to be You may have noticed, you may not have, that I never added salt before I started cooking the stock. Um, gosh, that's because that's how I've seen other people make stock and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do that too. For me, it is helpful because I don't measure things. So um, it's nice for me at the end to add the salt and I can just taste it and see how it's doing on the salt levels. Whereas like if I just put salt in before, um, I wouldn't be able to taste it and then maybe it'd be like way too salty. That being said, I'm gonna add my salt now and I'm using this mineral salt that I actually got in Peru. Not to be fancy, but you use whatever salt you have. Really, it doesn't matter. I use this because I have a ton of it and I kind of like its like minerally flavor. For example, if you had Himalayan um, pink salt, that'd be cool. If you have kosher salt, that'd be cool. If you have regular I deny salt, great. This salt happens to not be super salty, so I'm adding quite a bit. And then I'll give it a stir, hang on, and a taste. Just so the salt gets dissolved, you know what I mean. Okay, now my favorite part. I take a little teacup and I taste it. Oh my God, it's so good. It needs a little more salt though. It's truly amazing how you can just taste everything that you put in. Like each batch of stock has its own unique signature flavor. Oh, I love it. Like this one has that green herby flavor from the dill and parsley stems, the leek, the asparagus. I also get a little bit of heat the back of my throat when I swallow when um, from the jalapeno and ginger. Oh, it's so good. Thanks for going along with me on my stock making journey today. If you have any questions, go back a few slides and send it in to that little box. And if you make your own stock, let me know how it goes. Mm, it just tastes like a hug. Okay, now on to answering some of your questions. Honestly, I think it's mostly branding. I think like in the culinary world, the difference between stock and broth is that stock uses bones and broth uses uh, meat. So bone broth would be stock, yeah? Call it whatever you want, but like if you heard you should drink bone broth, yes, this is bone broth. In the fridge, I'd say five days. In the freezer, a few months. Like for this batch, I'm gonna leave some in the fridge and put the rest in the freezer. A great way to freeze stock is to use ice cube trays. So you make little little stock cubes. Another way is just to put it in like a plastic container or even a bag. Just know that that bigger piece of frozen stock will take longer to defrost. I don't know. To be honest, I don't have a microwave, so I'm not as familiar with using one. Um, I suppose you could. It's definitely not my top choice cooking appliance. Um, today I showed you an electric pressure cooker. You could do it in a slow cooker and you could do it on the stovetop. So hopefully one of those will work for you. Thank you.